Their images many will never forget. Oil gushing into the Gulf of Mexico from the 2010 BP oil spill. The company had to pay more than $60 billion in penalties, compensation, and cleanup. And BP also agreed to a medical settlement for workers who got sick cleaning up the mess. But David Hammer and our partners at the New Orleans Advocate found that most of the sickest workers are actually still waiting for help. That's right, Todd and Natalie. BP agreed to that settlement, that medical settlement, back in 2012. And tens of thousands of workers thought they were going to be paid for chronic illnesses. But only 40 of them, 40 of tens of thousands, got paid. And the rest, they've been forced back into court. Walter Castro is an industrial hygienist and workplace safety instructor. It's going to put pressure on that excavation. When BP hired Castro in 2010 to take air quality readings during the company's disastrous oil spill, he knew how dangerous it was when he found high levels of benzene in the air. Benzene is a carcinogen, so you know you really want to take a look at the different levels, and, they, and depending on your exposure, it could have a significant impact on you. But when Castro reported his findings, he said BP refused to give him and his colleagues personal protective equipment, and they were exposed. That we had a crew of about five to six members on our boat, and we were all feeling sick. And I, I, that's when I knew it just wasn't me that was going through this. Thousands of cleanup workers and coastal residents sued BP, claiming the oil and cleanup chemicals made them sick. BP used a chemical called Corexit to disperse the oil. It's banned in Britain because of concerns about health effects, but BP insisted it was as safe as dishwashing liquid and used it in unprecedented amounts. When you wake up in the morning, you're feeling the sinuses, you're feeling the pressure. Uh, you, you are, um, you're feeling the, the headaches that come associated with it. Castro was diagnosed with three chronic conditions from his exposure to the oil and chemicals. That qualified him for a $60,700 payment under a 2012 medical compensation settlement. Or so he thought. Two years after the settlement was approved in federal court, BP came back to court to reinterpret one line in the 200-page agreement. They waited until some time had set in on it, and then BP pulled the switch on the bait and switch. Houston-based attorney Howard Nations represents Castro and 11,000 others with chronic illness claims. This is by design. This is the biggest bait and switch scheme I have ever seen in the history of mass tort litigation. Here's how it worked. BP agreed to pay for chronic illnesses as long as they showed up or manifested right away. But take a look at this. In another part of the settlement agreement, it defines later manifested physical conditions as anything diagnosed after April 16, 2012. There were thousands of cleanup workers who didn't get their diagnosis by then, even though their chronic conditions showed up right away. So how could it be later manifested and you have to have it manifested right away? It, it couldn't. It couldn't. And Does that it make any logical no, sense? It makes no sense whatsoever. There are now an estimated 20,000 claimants with chronic illnesses still hoping for that day in court and BP has avoided paying them about $1.2 billion. Judge Barbier even said at the hearing, he said, well, this is not much of a settlement. I've never heard of a case where you have to file a case in federal court to recover your money on a settlement. Castro is one of them. The other is Bobby Bradbury. You know, we started going out on the water trying to locate where, it's, you know, how much is here, how much is there. And uh, that's when we noticed all the oil and we got full of oil. Bradbury was a firefighter and EMT on Grand Isle when he responded to sick cleanup workers and breathed in the oil himself. Once, he said a plane flew over and sprayed him with Corexit. You know, I've been sprayed in the face with mace. I've been, <clears throat> you know, things in my eyes before, but this really took a little bit to, to stop the burning. Wow, more than mace, huh? Oh, yeah, yeah. The federal judge who approved the settlement asked in 2014 how the confusion happened. Steve Herman, the lead plaintiff's negotiator for the settlement, said he inserted the language by mistake. So he just rolled over and said, well, if, if BP says so, then, you know, we'll agree to it. Herman and his firm were paid $87 million by BP for negotiating multiple settlements. BP also paid the medical settlement administrator, Matt Gerritsen, $150 million to manage the payments. Meanwhile, all 23,000 people who got sick cleaning up BP's mess 
got 67 million combined. Herman says he did the best he could for them, and they could end up making a lot more by winning their court cases than under the settlement. Castro hopes that's true. BP is just turning their back on us. We have employees that were doing a good job out there, and they went through uh, this exposure, and now they're having these problems. Now, BP declined to comment on the allegation that it pulled a bait and switch in court. BP has generally denied many of Castro's and Bradbury's claims, including Castro's contention that the oil giant failed to provide proper protective gear. So, David, what's next now? Well, the Nation Law Firm has been filing 20 cases a day in federal court. The trials for Bradbury and Castro are both set in the spring with Judge Jane Trish Malazzo. And Castro's will be in March and Bradbury's will be in May. Well, we know you will be on top of it. We'll be watching. David, thank you.